Welcome back to Moving the Chains with Ashmere here on Nuts and Bolts Sports. I'm Ashmere. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to go over a ton of NFL content because week 15 has just gone by. December is flying by. Christmas is like a week away, I want to say. I haven't done any of my Christmas shopping. Spoiler alert. Sorry to my secret Santa because I, didn't, I haven't even checked what they want on their list. Um, so for my family, we do this thing where everybody picks a name out of a hat. Since we all got jobs and money now, we buy each other a gift based on like whose name we picked. And so I need to get my person something great, even though last year I thought I did a pretty good job. So let's just move on to some football. First of all, we need to highlight Joe Burrow, who won the Heisman Trophy for 2019. He did amazing this season. He's been doing amazing, and I'm sure he will continue to play well against... Oklahoma University in the bowl game on the 28th so I mean his speech was just like so moving it's, it's been talked about since he spoke on Saturday <laughs> coming from from southeast Ohio it's it's a very very impoverished area and the, the, the poverty rate is almost two times the, the national average, and there's so many people there that, that don't have a lot, and I'm up here for all those, all those kids in Athens and in Athens County that, you know, go home to not a lot of food on the table, hungry after school, and you guys can be up here too. All around great guy. He wasn't even expecting to be, you know, where he is today. I actually saw somebody post a tweet, I'll put it up here, where he had reached out to a scout and he DM'd him and asked him like what training camps he could attend because he felt like he wasn't getting his name talked about enough and he wasn't getting enough exposure. And like here he is now like the most talked about quarterback in a while, the best of the season. His philanthropy or the foundation that he has in his name raised $400,000. He's just like all around doing very well for himself and it's been amazing to learn his story and see him, you know, take LSU to where they are today. And uh, yeah, congratulations to him. Okay, first we're gonna start with the hot highlights of the week because there were a couple cool ones that we need to talk about and one very monumental historic one which I obviously have to talk about afterwards. So first we'll start with Stefan Gilmore's interception, pick six. For against the Bengals. Um, this guy has just been a key component to the Patriots defense. He's been, I think it was the second one of the game. He's been on fire, electric. When they have receivers playing him on the corner, they're like nervous because I know I am when I'm picking my receivers for my fantasy teams because if they're up against him, it's a battle. And he picked that off of Tyler Boyd, who I left on my bench. So thank you. Good job, me. So that will be my first highlight. Secondly, we'll talk about Tyreek Hill's touchdown in the snow in Kansas City. Just Patrick Mahomes and him, their their connection on the field is like magnetic. I feel like Tyreek Hill has just come back throughout the season and this was just a fun play to watch. The final hot highlight will be Drew Brees setting the all-time NFL touchdown pass record of 541 in the 504 against the Colts beating Peyton Manning who had 539. Fun fact, Peyton Manning had his record with 266 games and Drew Brees did it in 273. So does that mean Peyton's better? I don't know. But those are my three highlights of the week. Um, awesome game by the Saints last night. I don't know if you guys watched the Nuts and Bolts Instagram, but I definitely said that Drew Brees had to pop off last night because he was really pissed about losing last week to the Niners at home. So he did that. Poor Jacoby Brissett. I feel bad for that guy. All right, and now we will move on to the football flash where, like I mentioned last week and every week, I'll be asked some questions about some current news and give my opinion. So, first question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Oakland finale? What are my thoughts on the Oakland finale? So, I actually went to the Oakland Raider game on Sunday on a whim because my sister and I both realized that we could never wake up and just go to a Raider game because they'll never be in Oakland again. And so, uh, tickets were silly expensive. Like, literally online, it was like almost $300 on StubHub and everything. So, 
I'm not going to tell you all how much we paid, but it was a pretty penny. But anyways, I mean, the first start by Derek was just, they're playing Jacksonville, right? You're expecting them to put on a great performance. Last game in Oakland, fans are literally wild. If you watch the pregame, you're just like, wow, this is a great way to leave such an amazing fan base, right? No, no, Derek Carr said. He said, what fan base? I'm trying to go to Vegas and lose life, okay? I was really mad at the performance. Minshew scored. They were behind the entire game. Gardner Minshew who is replacing Nick Foles because Nick Foles is just like on a flop right now, comes back with a minute and 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter, scores within about 55 seconds, and takes the lead. And Derek Carr is just unable to answer. Like, I was so disappointed, okay? I know everybody probably saw online that, like, fans were throwing trash on the field and just, like, acting out of pocket. But you would do the same if you were winning, barely, let's say, keep it real, barely winning to a team that you should be slaughtering because you're still fighting for a, West, a place in the playoffs and you couldn't do it. So it was just really sad to watch. I was actually really upset when I left. I was upset they're leaving, upset at the performance. And compared to last week when Tennessee was just dominating them at home, I feel like Derek wasn't playing relatively close to as he was last week. Like he was getting balls down the field. Just a really unfortunate game and I'm mad at Derek. I kind of forgot what the question was, but Derek was bad. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What are your thoughts? That was my thoughts. <laughs> okay. So what's going on with Philip Rivers? Is he gonna go to a new team, or is he gonna retire, or is he like just okay? Done? Philip Rivers, I think he's like starting his own family football team, don't you think? Like he has nine kids. Did y'all know that he has nine kids? Um, so he's like starting a basketball team or something. But I think for Philip, he has, he, uh, like, he has the pieces in his team to be something lethal, right? Like, I personally think they should be better than the Raiders, but then he makes a ton of mistakes and he throws way too many interceptions and he falls back on the po in the pocket. So I feel like if Phillip wants to be successful, um, he'll have to change his own attitude as a quarterback and I don't really perceive any team picking him up simply because they either have a good-ish quarterback that they want to mold, such as like Mike Tomlin with Duck Hodges, like he's still playing with him to see if he's worth it. Tannehill's dominating for Tennessee. Josh Allen is killing it in Buffalo. You know, everybody has like a person, or if not, they're like looking for that A1 person, <laughs> Joe Burrow. So for Phillip, I think he should, if he's smart, he should stay with the Chargers and kind of just figure out how to be a more lethal quarterback himself and just kind of get back into that rhythm. And I know he's older, just like Tom Brady, but he should kind of play like an older quarterback, right? Like he should be a little more reserved. If you can't do all these like quick dodge and dash moments, don't hurt yourself doing it, bro. But yeah, I feel like for him, it's safer to stay with the Chargers, but it's uh, not going to lead him too far if he continues to play the way he is. So. And now we will go on to the fourth and flop because uh, I think there's only a couple things that are really that were really terrible this weekend, and that was the performance by the Browns because Baker Mayfield and their I feel like their coaching staff they have like this really big ego, but they aren't able to like do anything about it. So they talk a lot of talk but can't walk the walk, as people would say. I feel like for the last five six weeks. You know, there was that altercation with the Steelers and then their coach wore that crappy t-shirt and it's just like, they always have this negative reputation in the league right now and I feel like they should be kicking butt essentially, right? If they're playing, if they're talking this way that they are and for the past six weeks they haven't been and I feel like that's just unfair. And now they've kind of got players like requesting to leave, so inside the management they need to figure out what to do to keep these people and keep these players like OBJ and Jarvis Landry and Kareem Hunt. I just feel like everybody's kind of questioning their efforts to change especially for next year and fun fact for everyone about the Browns they are the only team in the decade that have not had a winning season so I feel like at that point John Dorsey needs to come in and reevaluate everything that he's doing and kind of fire Freddie Kitchens. I'm sorry. I just like the entire league was disgusted at the way that the Browns had reacted to the Steelers altercation and then he's out here like repping that shirt. It, it was just it's just poor 
poor coaching and it kind of it's kind of like if you have children right you don't want to give off a bad you don't want to give them a bad impression of how to act with like a bad situation and I feel like he was just like whatever dude I don't care so the Browns are my flop this week because I think they have a lot of changing they need to do and Baker Mayfield really isn't that bad I just think he needs some help so that's kind of like my two cents on that. But somebody that I need to highlight this week is Russell Wilson in Seattle because they are now the number one seed in the NFC West. And I didn't think that was going to happen, but the Niners were exhausted from last week and lost to the Falcons, who have now beat the Saints and the Niners in their hometowns, which is like kudos to Matt Ryan. You know, you think the guy's like washed up, but here he is like him and Julio Jones out there making moves you know, beating top tier teams. So for Russell, he has been carrying the Seattle Seahawks tried and true throughout the season. He's been playing near perfectly. I feel like for an MVP contender, which I said a couple weeks back, he was like one of my top three people. I, I think he still belongs there. I think he's doing a great job. He's, he's playing so well. Him and Tyler Lockett, like with him on the sideline, it's like, He's catching every ball that Russell Wilson is throwing to him, and they're a great team. Chris Carson is a great run. I feel like everybody has really stepped up in order to make the Seattle Seahawks who they are, and when they play at home, that 12-man, which I hate, is, like, unbeatable. So kudos to Russell Wilson, and uh, I hope the Niners can come back. If, the, if you guys check everybody's matchups, I'll put, like, a little... NFC matchup thing here so we've got the Niners playing the Rams and the Seattle Seahawks again which is going to be difficult but I feel like if they want to be on top and game that home field advantage get a bye week all those fun perks you get when you're number one they will beat Seattle like by three points I don't think it'll be like a exactly how they played the first game I feel like it'll be a mirror image of that and for the Rams like the Rams are hot and cold right they got Killed. They got killed last week and they dogged the week before so it's like they're always they're on different sides of the pan I feel like and it's just it's gonna be easier for them to take them down because their defense is stronger than the Rams defense so Those are kind of like the two teams I really want to highlight because I feel like the NFC is insane right now and it's been the more fun conference to watch because I don't know what's going on in the AFC um all right, everyone, thank you for watching Moving the Chains with Ashmere here on Nuts and Bolts Sports. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, please let me know. Leave it down below. Check out the Nuts and Bolts website. Check out our basketball podcast. I mean, we've got so much content flying off of that page. It's insanity. So anything you need to talk about, anything you need to learn more about, we've got amazing writers across the nation. Um, bowl season is coming up, so we've got a lot of people covering that. Um, check out the Instagram page for all the content we'll be posting. And yeah, it was uh, yeah, yeah, been yeah, fun. Yeah, all right, yeah. well, thanks for watching. <laughs>